quite no, just the, a couple of parents challenging what we were doing. Um, but again, they did, they hadn't understood properly what we were doing, mm. and so and we had to explain it. What one parent, a father, wouldn't accept it, but actually his mother, uh, the child's mother, did support it. So that child did take part in it. Mm. Um, and his concern was that we were trying to turn everyone um, to be gay. Yeah. Um, as you how do. How we would do that, I have no idea. <laughs> we'd be very special if we could yeah. do that. Um, but, but that was really the only challenge. And the following year, um, we had nothing. We had the books out on display again. We had, we'd had new teachers in, so they all uh, went through with John how, how to handle diversity week, the sort of work that we wanted to come out of the books, and to do it like a writing workshop style thing, but with outcomes to share in an assembly. Mm. And we didn't have any problems, and we've never had any problems since Great. That, that first time. Do you, I mean, that's the common perception, isn't it? It always seems to be that people think you're either promoting sex, yes. gay sex, that you're yeah. only talking about the sexual aspects yeah. of relationships. Um, and you know it's often thrown out that children are too young to know mm. but that's because that assumption of the too young to know is based on the misconception we're talking about gay sex Absolutely. and teaching children to be gay which of course is it's not, it's, it's not the case not at all. I mean it, it's about the children knowing that people in partnerships um, come from different backgrounds it's about knowing that our children might live with a grandparent a foster parent two women two men it's about knowing that and it being normal mm. and it, them not thinking in the end. That's what, that's what you want in society, but, it, but it's, it's not different. Yes. So you want the children to be talking about it at a young age so that they do grow up knowing that it's very normal. Yes, and some of these children will, you know, a percentage of the children that come yeah. to our schools will grow up to be LGBT themselves. Yes, yeah. and hopefully from the work that we're doing, they will grow up comfortable with themselves Hopefully they'll be able to get through secondary, because I know secondary can be a problem yeah. for children that are struggling with their sexuality. But hopefully we've given them that background and that confidence to be confident about themselves and for our other children to be accepting of them as well. So I hope we've given them the, the, the basis of mm. being sort of good citizens, really. Great. So what if, if there was a school out there that was perhaps nervous about doing this work or reticent to do it, yeah. what advice would you give? To the school leaders? I would say to go ahead and do it. I would say um, the way that we do it um, with books as a starting point is a really good way of creating discussion but also that you need to make it part of your everyday curriculum as well. So in SEAL and in assemblies and in PHSE and in topic work, you know, if the opportunity arises then you discuss it as you would anything else. But make sure parents are well informed, make sure there's no misunderstanding, involve governors, um, talk to the local authority as well, because, because I, think, I think Diversity Week is a really, really good thing to do, but I don't think enough schools do it. Mm, it's a nice way in, isn't it? Yeah, and especially at primary, and I think we get, um, like we've had a student from Hall University come down, and I think we came to your school yes, as well, sure. to look at the work that we do, and the fact that it's our school and your school seems to suggest that not many other schools at primary. Yeah do this kind of work and I think that, that's a shame and it's not a scary thing if you saw the books mm. you think you know what's the fuss and it's such, a, be a fuss. it's such a wonderful way of reflecting all of the children all of the parents yeah. and all of the staff's backgrounds and cultures and relationships and everything else so Absolutely. It, it's a wonderful thing for everybody I think it is it is you can't go wrong doing it actually I don't think so. Um, but it depends, I mean we have a really creative curriculum and a really flexible yeah. curriculum so we can come off timetable and we can do this sort of work, just like we do for Art Week and mm. just like we do for Black History Month and things like that. So we do have that sort of curriculum and that, that probably would be the only challenge a school would find. If everybody was informed and everyone was confident with the planning, it might be the fact that restriction of timetable yes. and pressures of having to do things by a certain time in terms of assessment, observation and everything else that it gets in the way. <laughs> yes, and, that, and actually that's one of the barriers that you know I've experienced is, is, is other schools saying, but what about your literacy and your numeracy? Mm -hmm. And there's this assumption that if you're doing this work then maybe you're not doing your literacy and numeracy. Yeah. But, you know, things can be talked through other subjects as well. Absolutely, and actually one of the things that Ofsted pick up on now is that they want to see literacy in everything that you do. They want to see writing, they want to see reading at every opportunity. And actually, 
uh, with diversity week and with the books, you, you've got more literacy that, than usual within your timetable. So, and, and art and everything like that, so you can throw everything into it. So, and drama, maybe lots of drama comes yeah. out of it, and then, then they showcase their work.